All right, how's it going everyone? Thank you so much for being here. My name is Brendan Lowe, creator and founder of Jazz Piano School. And I'm just gonna let a couple people uh, say hi if you want, just say your name, where you're from. If you're a member and you know me, go ahead and just say hello. But thank you so much for being here. This is gonna be a fun session. And I'm really, really happy that you've decided to attend this because planning and strategizing is not everyone's bag, right? It's not something that we all want to do. I love it personally. Uh, I'm a systematic person. I love preparation. I love planning. I love strategizing. But, you know, not, that's not everyone. And every, there's a lot of different personalities out there. So, again, congratulations for being here because for some of you out there, it may not be that fun, right? It's not something you want to do, but you know it can help, right? And a little strategizing and planning can go a long, long way. So um, again, thank you for being here. This is going to cover a lot of different topics and it this, this is going to be the first part of a three-part series. So this part is going to be all about goal setting and strategizing. The second part is going to be more about the plan and the third part, the third live stream session I'll do is going to be more about the execution. So today we have goal setting and how to organize your goal setting for 2022. The second session is going to be about the plan. What is the plan going to be? Now the difference between goal setting and plan is like goals is what you're striving for. The plan is how to get those goals. And then the execution is obviously how do we execute the plan to help us reach our goals, right? So, um, uh, DL Reed, Dennis. Hey, Dennis. Thanks so much. Now, there's. Um, I'm going to be talking about the education within Jazz Piano School a little bit. So, if you're a member, go ahead and let me know if you're uh, a member of Jazz Piano School. Some of you might have just um, joined through our Black Friday um, special, and we do have some new members, and some of you may already be longtime members. So, I'm going to be talking about the education because at this point, inside of Jazz Piano School, there's there's so much education. We just released new playbooks. And, um, you know, I'm going to be talking about your needs and wants, your needs and wants. And you can pretty much find absolutely everything you need and want almost, I would say mostly need, but like wants, like if you want to learn how to play Oscar Peterson, we don't have like an Oscar Peterson course or an Art Tatum course yet. Right. But we do have all of your needs inside of Jazz Piano School. And I do want to ask all of you, even if you're a member or you're a non-member, in a little bit, I'm going to ask you, so be prepared, what what do you want? Like, what do you want to see? What do you want in your education? Do you, What do you want to see inside of Jazz Piano School? Because like I was saying, all of this right now, like it's been about seven years, we have, we have over a thousand videos inside of Jazz Piano School. And, and a friend of mine, the other day said something really funny to me that just made me stop in my tracks. And he said, you know, Brendan, what are you just going to keep making new videos for the rest of the business? And I was like, yeah, that, that doesn't really make sense. Right? So I was like, I was like, man, well, what, what does need to happen? Right? So that's kind of something that's been spinning around in my head. And it really aligns with my own goals, my own vision for Jazz Piano School and yours as well, because I love interacting. I want to hear from people. I love getting feedback. You know, why are they, why or why not? Do they not, you know, do well inside of Jazz Piano School? Is the education right for you? What do you think you need? So anyway, we'll get into all of that. Um, take my name out of there for now. So, uh, hey, Thomas, Tricker Kicker or Chicker Nicker. I love that name. Um, since Black Friday, indeed. Awesome. Esther, thank you guys all so much for being here. Um, uh, Victor. Hey, Victor. Um, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Great. So let's get into this a little bit. And, um, I just want to preface before I go to kind of their goal setting, I want to preface this by saying a lot of things can unlock unexpectedly unlock certain areas of your playing that you may not have thought would do that. Right. And I get this all the time. Um, someone sent me a video the other day and they're like, Brendan, how do I play like this? Right. And so it was a video of this, um, you know, cool kind of fusion thing. Um, I didn't, I wasn't prepared to go to the piano just yet, but I'll just, you know, it was something like.
something like that. I don't really remember, but you know, there was a bass player and there was a drummer and, and I, and it sounded great, right? My point is when you strip back the layers of what a group is doing, like the bass player and the drummer, and you just have what the pianist is doing. And then if I take away the electric road sound, right, of what I'm playing, it would now sound like this. It's not really important what I'm playing, but if I strip that down a little bit more, I take out the rhythm. So I'm going to take out some of the rhythms there. Sorry, let me just do this so you guys can actually see what I'm playing here. If I strip out my rhythms, this way you don't have to just look at me playing and staring at the piano. This is what it would be like. One, two, three, four. One, two, two, three, four. If I take out my bass, <laughs> what's up, Carlos? What's up, Alan? What's up, Nemo? Five minutes late. It's all good. T. Jordan. This would just be my right hand, Mark. Hey, how's it going? From France. Bonjour. So my right hand is just playing rootless voicings. And then an altered, this is a, a two-hand voicing right here that I created for an altered voicing, but rootless, everything else was just rootless voicings, just rootless voicings. G minor seven rootless. Here's my one two-handed voicing, meaning when I say two-handed voicing, I'm, I need my left hand to create the sound I'm looking for. So my left hand is playing root and third. I need that third matched with my seven sharp nine flat 13 but everything else was just rootless voicings now if you don't know your rootless voicings this is a very common term for a set of voicings that definitely need to be learned by all jazz pianists it's a necessity right now my point being is that this person this student okay this does relate to goal setting trust me this student wanted to learn how to do this. That was, that was their want. He wanted to learn the, or what was happening there. And from an outside perspective, the allure, the magic of the sound and everything that was happening in the video, it's very intriguing and it's very alluring and it's very, it's something that really catches our attention. But when you start to pull back the curtain on some of these things, I'm sorry to say it, but it's like the Wizard of Oz, right? You, you hear this amazing sound and you expect this grandiose thing that's happening and you pull back the court curtain a little bit and, you know, you get this kind of older gentleman like working all these levers and you see the magic. And you're like, oh, that's it. And yes, that that is it. So in your goal setting, what we're going to do is that I'm, we're going to break it down into two categories. And I don't want to kind of go further than that, but let's just start there. So January, February, and March, I want you guys to set two goals. And in the planning version of this, um, which will be next week, I'm going to be releasing um, more of a, uh, a resource that you can use to help. For now, if you have a piece of paper, you can just write these down or you can save it for the resource that will be um, I'll be releasing because I there's going to be a big spread, a big tree to this. Kind of like a hierarchy of how to do this. So, for January, February, and March of 2022, I want you to write a a need goal and a want goal. These should actually be flip-flopped, I'm sorry. This should be ahead of this. I want you to write a want goal and a need goal. So this person wanted to learn how to play this kind of cool, fun, fusion, funk thing and what they needed, right? And you may not know that. You may not know your need goal yet, but that's what the planning session is going to be next week. 
what is the plan to get your want? right? And that's okay if you don't know your need goal. If you do know your need goal, if you've been neglecting some things that you already know are going to get you to the point that you want to be at, then definitely write your need goal. I think I saw someone say, um, T. Jordan said they're a member, just didn't have the time to devote to the curriculum. Other job takes most of it. Watch you now on the job. (laughs) That's really funny. I appreciate your dedication. Thank you so much. So, um, you know, that's, that's, you know, something that they probably realize that what they need, right? T. Jordan probably realized they need certain things in the curriculum to get to where they want to be. So go ahead and write this now. I'm just going to give you a couple seconds. If you don't want to write, you can just chill for a little bit, but write your want goal and write your need goal. This is only going to be, hey, Jeffrey, for the first three months of the year, the first three months of the year, because I always like to keep my students moving about in different ways. And if you try to do this for the entire year, you're going to get burnt out. Trust me. I get burnt out. I got to switch things up. Um, it's really hard to be consistent in anything we do in life, right? But that's where the most amount of progress is made. I mean, think about sports players, musicians, anyone in life, you know, doing a craft that takes a lot of time and effort. They're doing it consistently every single day. You know, Kobe, going and playing basketball every single day, you know, Art Tatum, Oscar Peterson, they're playing every single day. There's a fun story my teacher told me in New York um, that he used to live, actually, my teacher studied with Lenny Tristano. Uh, If you guys don't know who that is, you should definitely go check him out. But he used to, when he was younger, he used to live next to Benny Green. Benny Green, amazing, amazing pianist, phenomenal, historical. And he said that Benny would take literally probably two to three 15 minute breaks almost every day. But besides that, there literally wasn't a time where he didn't hear him working on things, practicing and trying to get better, obviously in getting better (laughs) because he's a, a beast, right? But he would be playing the entire day, almost the entire day. He literally only probably took breaks and that was in New York City. And that always that story always stuck with me, right? Because they're all we're always doing this consistently. So anyway, write your need goal down. So this, let me give you an example here. Let's say I want to, um, and it's hard for students. I understand it's hard for it was hard for me too when I was going through my career because I would say like, like I want to I want to sound good. I want to sound good over, um, you know. Um, the tune four, or that might be an example of like a want, right? Or yes, definitely rest in peace, Barry Harris. Um, my staff and I, Sterling Coza, are planning on doing a, um, a Barry Harris tribute, educational tribute and otherwise. So that'll be coming out. Look for that coming in the future. Barry Harris, just amazing, amazing. And actually, right when I heard of his passing the other day, I, you know, I was like, man, his education was so inspiring to me and just moving that I was like, I need to, I need to create some sort of specialty course on Barry Harris. That's going to, you know, hopefully put his education, give it justice because he was just such a brilliant, brilliant man. Anyway, RIP Barry Harris. So your want goal, could be like, I want to get better at bebop improv Now, for a lot of students, it's going to be a very general thing. Like I know a lot of you probably, someone said ear training, like they want to get a better ear, right? So all these goals that usually we come up with that we want, they're very generic. Hey, Gene. Hey, Ed. And they don't really, they're not specific enough, right? And that's what the planning session next week is going to be. And so how do we get a better ear, right? How do we get better at bebop improv, how do we get better at playing over four? Because make no mistake over the tune four. Make no mistake, each of these comes with a lot of different, um, a lot of different things. And I'm going to break it down for you. So let's say you wanted to improve. And if you guys list out your goals too, if you want to, um, what I'm going to do is at the end of 2022, I'm going to do the same exact planning session. I love doing these planning sessions. And you're going to rate yourself. So hopefully you'll have your goals listed out. You can hold on to the resource we're going to be relating or releasing next week. And when in 2022, the end of 2022, you can come to the live stream again and you can rate yourself 
um, give yourself kind of like a critique about what you did, what you're able to accomplish, what you didn't, why and why not. Let's say you want to play over the tune four. There's a lot that goes into this. What is your need goal? Well, <laughs> there's just thousands of things. When you start to break it apart, you need voicings, right? And this is dependent upon how many, like what's your knowledge of voicings? So sort of a self-assessment has to take place. Like where are you at your voicings? And as you start to self-assess yourself, do you know triads, right? This is going to be very important. Do you know rootless voicings? Okay. Or even before this, right? And I'm going to be creating a, probably a, um, a specialty course on voicings. Do you know all your seventh chords? And do you know your rootless voicings? Do you know your two-hand voicings? The two Now, when I say two-hand voicings, I mean the two-hand voicings that I teach, the educational structure I teach. So two-hand voicings with the three structures, meaning you have left-hand bass notes, or excuse me, left-hand bass, or like one and seven. I've talked about this a lot. And then right-hand has three. That's an example. Do you know your drop twos? So on and so forth. So that is just one need within your goal to play over four, right? And that's already a lot. So my point is every want goal that you have is going to have numerous, numerous amounts of need goals. Now, as I was saying before, certain need goals actually unlock a lot of different things. So if you work on some foundational need goals, like your voicings, for example, I would argue that voicings and your rootless voicings, especially your rootless voicings, especially will, uh, will unlock so many things for you in your jazz piano performance. It's unfathomable. Like it, it will completely unlock. Now, lots of people want to learn their drop twos. It's a great sound, but they don't unlock as much as your rootless voicings do. Now, you being the student, there's no way for you to know that. And especially if you're trying to teach yourself, if you're jumping around videos on YouTube and stuff like that, you would never, ever, ever know that. That's why it's so important to, you know, study with a teacher, whether it be jazz piano school, myself, uh, you know, myself with jazz piano school, other other teachers, you need to understand what certain things have weight. Like if I were to list these with priority, these are, these are definitely prior. This is actually, I put it as priority. So triads, if you don't know your triads, this is all priority, right? And people will jump to the most desired thing, meaning their drop twos. And if I were to put, um, if I were to put improv here, improv, right? If we start to break this down because you want to learn your improv over the tune four. Um, and like I said before, bebop language was something that you wanted to do, right? Now bebop language, spelled language wrong. Bebop language, that's very complex, right? And you may not know even how to work with your modes in chord tones, right? Modes in chord tones, so we're, as a student, we're always jumping to our wants, right? And we do have needs, but just like in life, we need to balance the two. We need to ask ourselves, what is going to lead to my want goal? So if you put a want goal down, as I've been talking through this, and again, if there's some brave uh, people out there that want to share their want goal, um, Howard says, I'd love more technique. Mine sucks. I need virtuosity, but I can't play with two hands at the same time. Only one or the other. That's great. That's great. So like, I would, I would love to hear some more examples, um, of, of people's want goals, right? Because let's take Howard, for example, he's looking for more technique. He's looking for more virtuosity, more dexterity in his playing and some coordination, right? Because he's struggling to play two hands at a time. Now, the need, right, can be, you know, a lot of people assume Hannon, arpeggios, scales, etudes, but there's a lot of different components that go into that as well, right? Because if we're just practicing exercises all the time, yes, our fingers will get stronger, but how does that actually translate into the movements of jazz, right? Because 
always ask your always ask the question why like why howard why do you want more technique is that so you can play certain improv lines at a faster tempo is it so you can play melodies better it may be in this case it's so you can put your hands together because often the student has beliefs right false beliefs that they're thinking okay well i need this to get this but the thing they're thinking they need is not the thing that's going to get them this right and that's why the main course curriculum success path inside jazz piano school i believe is such a strong foundational backbone to learning jazz piano because I've structured it in a way where I'm giving you all the necessary steps to get to the next step. Meaning a lot of times you may think you need something, but you actually don't to get what you want, right? And so then the student and me in general, this is always my story. I ended up trying to go after all these different things and it was never the thing that I actually thought I needed. All right. Anyway, back to this. So if you have, if you have a goal, let's say your want goal was playing over the tune four try and get a little bit more specific with it. So playing over the tune four is great. Um, but if you can specify now, remember in jazz, there's lots of different categories. And if you can, I just really, the playbooks were really based on heavy necessity categories, meaning voicings in jazz piano is a heavy necessity category. Okay. Improv is a heavy necessity category, right? What else would you think is a heavy necessity category? Rhythm is a heavy necessity category. Now, within all of your goals, there's two options. I'm going to get into a little bit of the planning session here. There's solo piano. And then there's group. Right? So I want you to remember this, solo, piano, and group. Now within each of these categories, you have different strategies and methods. Solo piano has methods <clears throat> and group has different methods. Now they can overlap in some certain ways, but at this, you know, at the heart of it, if you're going for a goal that's within solo piano, that's gonna take a different path. That's gonna be a different path than the group. I wish I had a whiteboard here. That'd be kind of fun. Anyway, back to voicings improv. So for example, this should be up here. All of these categories are going to be different depending upon your solo piano goal and your group goal. So I'd argue Definitely think about this every time you make a goal, right? What If your want goal is you want to play this tune, the four in solo piano, that's really specify that. So I'm going to add that in here, playing over the tune four in a solo piano format, right? So now we've just gotten a little further, a little bit more specific into our goal. Now, the more specific we can get, the easier our plan is going to be and the more focus we're gonna be in our execution, which is really, really important. So now let's go a little further. Like I was saying, there's huge necessity categories, right? So let's say in a tune, there's a lot, there's different things happening, right? Comping is going to be a group item, or you can also comp for yourself. So comping kind of takes on both aspects, but let's say your goal was to be able to comp better while playing solo piano. Now, when I say comp better, I simply mean if you're playing a tune, you're gonna jump down and play like you're comping for yourself. So like I'm comping at the same time I'm playing a melody in my solo piano version of autumn leaves, right? If you're comping in a group, that's a different goal. So these are going to be extremely important to specify. And this is why I broke this down into Q1, Q2, Q3, because it's going to allow you to go after certain goals. So let's just pick one. Let's just pick one of these voicings, improv rhythm. Let me see here for real, real quick. Um, voicings, improv, rhythm, I would, I 
would say styles. This will be more solo piano. Yeah, so solo piano is a grouping in itself. So these four groupings are going to contain lots of other groupings, meaning under improv, let's say you're like, oh, I want to get better at improv over the tune four in a solo piano format. Okay, how do you want to get better at improv? Do you want to learn bebop language? This is the same kind of thing I did with the voicings. Do you want to learn modern language? Do you want to, you know, if you know some of my education, do you want to improve at your chord tones? Do you want to improve at your chord scales? Do you want to improve your textures? Do you want to improve your blues scale within your improv over the tune four? Right, you could use some blues there. Right, so on and so forth. So there's so many different ways you can go about doing this. So again, you would have to choose one of these. And hopefully you guys are following along with me right now. I'm kind of moving through this, explaining it to you, but I want you guys to be working at doing this on your own right now. And again, we are going to be releasing that resource. So maybe you can just follow along right now and then you can do it yourself, but you'll have a better uh, understanding of how important this is by being here. So that's good at least. So playing over the tune four in a solo piano format and improvising. I really need to come out with the uh, level improvisation uh, it's going to be in the improv specialty course, actually, that I want to release. But um, so I'm going to have a rating, an improv rating system so that you can assess yourself and be like, I'm a level two, I'm a level four based on the layers and and uh, educational strategies that are going to be in a sequential order for improvisation. That way, you know exactly what to do next in your improvisation. Otherwise, it's just a it's just a free for all. You're trying to learn bebop and modern. Anyway, uh, solo piano format and improvising in a, let's just say, um, a diatonic way. Now, by diatonic, I mean, I mean, if you were to improvise over four in a diatonic way, I'm just using chord tones and chord scales. Sorry, I did some extensions there. No extensions. This is what I mean by diatonic. No extensions. Just a diatonic way, right? So believe it or not, everything I'm playing right now is diatonic. And when I mean diatonic, I mean there's no extensions, there's no improvisational tools happening, right? It's just a diatonic way of improvising. And this is this is uh, a, like a level two. It's going to be a level two in my system. Level one is just, I'm giving you guys some insights into the improvisation specialty course I'll be releasing next year. Level one is going to be just chord tones. Level two is a diatonic improviser. And I recommend these strategies as the systematic process and step-by-step -step process to get your improvisation to pro level. And so many, all of us, we want to be able to improvise. Like we, that's, it's so many of our goals. It was my goal, right? So chord tones would just be this.
right? That's just chord tones. So that would be level one. Okay. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting off track here, but um, you'd want to specify in your goal setting what level you want to get to or what you want to do. Now, level three after diatonic is going to be bebop language. So you start to add in your approach notes. So I'd go... Right, you hear all the different movements now. So that would be a specific way. So anyway, you want to specify what the actual type of improvising that you want to get better at is going to be. Now this whole goal, this whole want, the way we're setting this out, now that you have a better understanding, is going to translate into our need goal. Because once we look at it, all right, let's say this is our goal, playing over the tune four in a solo piano format and improvising bebop in my right hand, okay? This goal is highly attainable, you know, depending upon where you are. Let's say someone had achieved the diatonic, the level two improviser of my um, education system for improvising, then they would be able to improvise how I just demonstrated. This is all diatonic. But now someone wants to take it to the next level. And so a lot of students will say, okay, well, I don't, what is the next level? It's probably cool reharms. You know, some out stuff. No, that's not the next level. That's not the next step in the improvisation path. That simply leads people in other ways that start to die, like take them off the, tr the path that they need, right? Tricker Nicker says, getting that rhythm feeling seems super challenging though. Yes, absolutely, right? Rhythm is a big uh, component of improv as well. So when I was breaking down, when I was breaking down the voicings in the improv, right? Rhythm is going to be a, a big subcategory that needs to be worked on you know, while you're improving your rhythm. So let's say, you know, level one, chord tones. I'm actually going to be um, doing a, a uh, why isn't this working? I'm gonna be doing a guest lecture and presentation. I did this last year for a lot of people. I think a lot of people um, signed up for the tickets to um, learn jazz standards live. It's a really great website, um, Trent. I don't know how to say Brent. I'm sorry, Brent. I don't know how to say his last name. Trent is on the JPS staff. I get them confused. But anyway, I'll be sending out notifications about that. And I'm going to be actually doing my education system on my improvisation layers for my presentation. And so uh, I highly recommend you check that out. It's not, it's, uh, it's a, in collaboration with Brent's website, which is Learn Jazz Standards. And his live online thing is Learn Jazz Standards Live. Um, last year, um, Jamie Abersall did a lecture, Peter Martin, um, Adam Manis from Open Studio Network, um, great, obviously great website and great educators there. And so we all did different education, but my education presentation, if you want to buy tickets to that, is going to be on this system. So you're going to get a little sneak peek. It's not long. It's going to be half an hour. Um, I think all the lectures are half an hour, but you get access to a bunch of them. Um, but it's going to be on this material I'm teaching right now. Or you can just wait for the <laughs> Jazz Piano School Improvisation Mastery Specialty Course to come out. And you'll get all of the ed education in a much more in-depth way. So, uh, yes. Like Tricker Nicker said, there's different levels. Level 2. Um, I want to put modes. Glue notes. Now, rhythm, rhythm is a separate category because improv by itself is just the knowledge of doing these things. Now, rhythm does go hand in hand with improv, but rhythm needs to be worked on in different ways, right? So within rhythm, you have improv, you have comping, you have solo piano, right? You have voicings. So rhythm takes on a thing of like, well, what do you need to work on your rhythm for? Right now, if it is in combination with improv, then you'd work on your rhythm at these certain layers. So if your chord tone 
Solo sounds like this. Let's say you're playing chord tones. Your chord tone solo sounds like this. Here, I'll, I'm going to comp my left hand. Um, don't pay attention to it. It will be at a pro level. <laughs> but my right hand will be beginner. Okay, you get the picture. All I'm doing is really, really basic rhythms and there's not much variation contrast. So that would be a focus of emphasis, right? That would trick or nicker. That would be your, your need, right? To improve at your improv chord tones for your Q1 goal is to start to work on that. And again, how we do that is a whole different ball game. That's what I'm gonna get into in the planning session next week. But that would be your goal. Yes, right. Now, some of you that are on here would would have uh, rhythm already, but you don't know. You don't know these improvisational steps. Okay, I'm gonna go that far because I don't want to give it all away. Otherwise, you guys will, you'll know my presentation. <laughs> Anyway, back to our goal here. So playing over the tune four in a solo piano format, improvising in improvising bebop in my right hand. Right? And so this may change based on the improv level that you're all at. And if you discern that you're a level one, I should say ascertain. Is that the better word? Yes. <laughs> They're probably both... Right. Anyway, you can use the chord. You can, you know, then you would use chord tones for your goal. Improvising bebop in my right hand, or you would take out bebop. Okay, you get this. You get this. Chord tones with more rhythmic text emphasis, right? Or textures or contrast is better. So this right here as a want goal is like really, this is great. This is so fantastic. And I urge you to, this could be argued that like this is kind of, this is like students won't really, they won't really write like this. So I'm trying to help you guys, you know, do that. Um, but when you do this, right, this, you know, like this is going to help your need goal so much, right? Because once we go to the piano, now that I know my want goal, what do I need to do? Well, I need, I'm, I need to learn the tune four, right? But I need to work on my chord tones. Let's say my bebop language was my goal. Then I'd work on my bebop language. I'd work on my approaches to the chords within four. And then I'd go to my next chord, my E flat minor. And I'd work on my other bebop approaches. So I do, you know, chord scale above to half step below. Whoops, sorry. And then I would do my E flat minor. Now, this is just over the tune, obviously. So this is what would help start to help your bebop language improve. And then you start to integrate that slowly into your playing. So I'm just working on half steps now, half step belows. Half step below, half step below, half step below. Right? So you start to work on your bebop language in that in that want goal. So now your need goal becomes learn the tune for. I can keep capitalizing this. And then um, work on, well, this is for chord tones. I'm doing my, I'm doing the bebop goal here. Work on half step below approaches to all seventh chords. Work on half step below 
approaches to the chords in four, in time, integrate half step below approach into your solo over four, over the tune four, right? So that would be for one bebop approach, right? That's your, those are your needs now. But like, like I originally said that one student asked me, well, how do I do, how do I play that funk style? You know, like that person was playing. Okay, how do we do that? Like, you know, the, you would start to work on your rootless voicings. There's a bunch of different things in there split up, okay? So I'm gonna get off this for a second, but let's, what I want again is to, for you to write down a need goal. I'm gonna go back over some of the comments here. Get rid of all this. So, um, Rodrigo says, what I think I need now is fluency in vocabulary, Rodrigo. Just finished stage two, start stage three. That's awesome, congratulations. More fluency and vocabulary, yes. And as you start to build your foundation, fluency and vocabulary is a number one, a very you know, high emphasized educational component that's gonna be needed. Um, I find it hard to know, Nemo says, I find it hard to know when I should move on from one concept to the next. Like how good should I be with my triads to the circle of force before I should focus on seventh chords. And in, <clears throat> You know, in, in jazz and two, it's like every, everything has a purpose. So I want you guys to think about practicing with purposes or like, what's the goal? Like, what's the, what's the purpose of these things? And it can be hard and kind of discouraging when, when people, your teacher is telling you to learn some things, but the purpose of triads, for example, is going to be to be able to play seventh chords. So all concepts lead into a next thing, right? Because if you don't know your triads, then you can't really, you can't really play pop too well. <laughs> I had the electric piano on still. Marla, congratulations. That's awesome. So that was all triads, right? That's all triads. And obviously triads lead to seventh chords. So the Nemu, the goal of the triads isn't really, it's like, it's not really when to, it, it is obviously. Like when do you move on? But it's the, the, you think about the purpose of learning these concepts, like based on your want goal. So like, this is exactly why I'm doing this because a lot of students, they don't really know what they want or you may not know what you want. You know, you just want to get better at jazz piano, right? And that's great. But like the more you can focus in on your wants in your need, then that's going to give you so much more purpose in your playing. It's going to give you more motivation, more inspiration as you sit down to practice, right? So the purpose of this, you may, let's say someone... The purpose of triads is so that you can play pop, you can play jazz because triads are built, the seventh chords in jazz are built off of triads. If I take the seventh out of a, <laughs> if I take the seventh out of a chord, then you're left with triads, right? So if your want was to play pop, then the first need goal you're gonna have is to learn triads and then learn inversions and then learn your left hand movements and then learn a 16th note feel.
that may be a goal of yours. So your need goal is going to be to learn the triads. And when you know the purpose of certain exercises, it's very, very helpful. And this is what this planning session is all about. I'm just going to answer some of these questions real quick. Um, Carlos said, where would texture come into play with improv rhythm and solo or group piano playing? Yes. Texture is last. Um, so the, should I do this for you guys? I guess I'm going to do it if I can remember. All right. I'm going to give it away. I don't want to, but <laughs> I hope you guys still, um, purchase tickets to learn jazz live because it's going to be amazing. And there's lots of other educators. So it's not just me. Like I said, J Peter Martin was there. Jamie Abersall last year. Um, uh, Adam Manis, uh, a whole bunch of other people. Brent himself is an amazing jazz player and he, you know, runs his website, but here I don't really, <laughs> I don't really remember the, um, name of my presentation. I think it's the nine, the nine layers of improvisation needed to this is to answer your question, Carlos. This is why I'm doing this. Nine layers of improv needed to master. Wait, nine layers needed to master improvisation. This doesn't, this doesn't matter. I don't really know. So um, level, you can call them, I call them, I interchange level one chord tones level two glue notes victor this will answer your question the glue notes i like to call the glue notes uh it, <laughs> it's my it's my hidden teacher way for modes because people are like oh, i don't want to learn modes but if you check it this out i find this super super helpful when you have chord tones as level one and you first start to learn your chord tones there's only three other notes missing from a mode almost at all times, okay? So the other three notes are the glue notes. So when I say the term mode, it's kind of triggering for a lot of people because they don't want to learn modes or they had a teacher that made them learn modes and they just hated it. They didn't understand why you needed to learn modes. But the purpose of modes is to get glue notes in between your chord tones. Your chord tones are your anchors to a harmony and your glue notes are the three remaining notes that serve as the glue to connect your anchors. Now, if I, all I'm doing is playing my chord tones in a solo, it sounds choppy. Now, when I add my three glue notes, I can do this. Right? So, that's exactly what the purpose of glue notes are so that you can connect your anchors. And then again, jazz terminology calls it modes. But when you think about it like that, it's like, oh, wow, that makes a whole lot of sense, right? So um, this essentially will be glue notes, aka chord scales, modes, uh, chord scales. Level three, this is going to be bebop language. Now, that's kind of like tier one, okay? Now, tier two, you get into, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to forget this, um, improv tools. Level five is going to be left-hand voicings, level six, reharms. That's tier two. This may not be completely accurate, but I think it is. Level seven. This is where you start to get into textures, Carlos. So textures, Uh, level nine is motifs, storytelling, thematic content. Uh, 
I don't remember what level eight is. <laughs> I had this written down somewhere, but I remember. Anyway, textures is going to be the third tier. This could be, no. Textures is going to be the third in the third tier. And by textures, I mean, instead of playing a blue scale, like instead of playing, you would go like a slide or a um, some sort of trill. Those are all textures. Um, dynamics are textures. Two notes. Those are all textures. Those are all different types of textures that elevate your playing. Because when a be beginner starts improvisation, it's just here. Eventually you get some more improv tools, left hand voicings, reharms, textures. Right? So my texture here was a slide and then a two note trill. Right? Those are all textural things that emphasize and elevate the sound of your improv and not, you know, everything that you're playing. If I play a line like I could immediately elevate the sound of that line simply by applying textures. Right? So I can slide in. Just by adding those two textures, the slide on top, and then the roll, I've elevated the sound of my of that improv, right? And that's why textures are so important, but you can't just apply textures to chord tones because you need to learn all these different steps first, right? All right, hope you screenshotted that because <laughs> it's gone. I need, to, I need to go back to my notes and find out what layer eight was. Now, now I'm hooking myself. <laughs> yeah. It could have been, it could have been rhythms, Esther. Rhythms is in there somewhere. It might be rhythmic contrast again because those trills are rhythmic contrast, right? But I think I put rhythms maybe in motifs because I have two layers of motifs being melodic and rhythmic motifs. Anyway, you guys will all get it, so don't worry. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, Carlos, that's where textures are. And again, um, answer that question. So this is this is critical. Whoa, split. Critical to navigating all the information that's available on the internet. Absolutely, Ed says. And um, when I close my eyes, Trick or Nicker says, when I close my eyes and can play chords and inversions, even at a very, very slow pace, I move on. To me, it means I've internalized them. That might be, yeah, absolutely. And again, it, it's for the purpose. Like our whole purpose is to play music, you know, to play music. It's not really to play exercises. And we can definitely get caught up in that. And I, you know, I, I preach and, and emphasize exercises and different strategies and methods because I'm, I'm more of a systematical thinker and an, I approach jazz with a that type of mindset, right? Because it, it has helped me immensely, but you can go too far because you always really need to understand what the purpose is and that's why I'm doing this today. Like what is your want and what is your need? So the more you can be clear about that and I'd, emphasize, I'd want you to do four things quarters. So break down your goal set for 2022 into quarter one and you'll have your want and your need goal. And then you have quarter two, you have your want and your need goal quarter three, because three months I found is a very, very optimal time frame to really dive into things and not get burnt out. Right. Um, anything past that, you really start to lose motivation, steam and if you can do something for 90 days, honestly, that's huge, like huge. You'll make so much progress and then move on to something else. And like I said, the goal is to play music, right? The goal is to play tunes and everything you work on is to make your tune playing better, to make your music playing better, right? To make the playing of four better or, you know, whatever tune it is that you're working on. So that is going to be the goal setting process and... I know it was a lot of talking, not much demonstration, but the next week I'm going to be going over the plans, right? I'm going to be going over the plans, the strategies, and the system um, and educational components that you need. Now, <clears throat> uh, all of it, for the most part, for the concepts are in Jazz Piano School. If you're not a member of Jazz Piano School, that's okay. 
but it's I just can't teach I can't teach everything on these public lessons that you need to know and that's that's why the resource of jazz piano school is there for you so um, if you're a lifetime member great you don't need any of this stuff but we are running holiday uh, our holiday special is going to be released next week if you're a black if you um, signed up through Black Friday you're a lifetime elite member so this doesn't apply to you but a lot of people wanted the playbooks that we released they wanted the individual things that they need like for example you may just want the blues piano playbook you may want the solo piano playbook right and so you'll be able to get all these individual courses the specialty courses the uh, the main course curriculum success path any of our playbooks our mini courses our specialty courses individually through this holiday promotion uh, it will be opening next monday and these educational components can lead to the things that I'm teaching you on these public lessons, right? Because again, you need, if, if I'm telling you that this is a certain path based on your want goal and this is your need, then your need might just be the solo piano system specialty course, right? And all you have to do is get that and you can work through it and that's going to accomplish your want goal. You want to play solo piano better in a solo piano style. You want to play tunes better, arrange your hands. Like these certain bits of education are going to do it. Now, obviously lots of people we all have different wants, right? We want to be able to do solo piano. We want to be able to improvise. We want to be able to do this. And that's why, you know, Jazz Piano School has all of that. So you may need just more than that one course, but that's completely up to you. If you just want that one course, it's totally fine. Anyway, this is for non-members. If you're a member already, that's just a sign-up link to get information about our holiday sale. That's going to be starting on Monday. And again, even if you are a monthly member or if you if you are um, a member or some sort of purchaser of any of our individual courses, you can purchase other individual courses now because Black Friday didn't allow people to do that. That was just for a lifetime elite. A lot of people wanted everything inside of Jazz Piano School. That's why they um, went for that. But nothing else was on discount for Black Friday. And this is going to be the opportunity for people to get individual courses now based on what they want. And some monthly members... You may want to buy a course and not be a monthly member because you're going to own that course for life, right? And that's like buying a movie instead of having it in your Netflix collection. When we subscribe to Netflix, we get all this stuff that we can watch continuously, but maybe like I want to buy a movie and not have to pay monthly so I can watch that movie over and over and over again, right? This is what that would be. So if you want to buy a course, not be a member, that's totally up to you. Anyway, <clears throat> um, your want goal is going to be based on your need. When you follow your needs, you're going to get your want goal and break it up into four categories. By next week, I'm going to be diving into the planning of one quarter. So how do we plan and map out one quarter of our want ver and need so that we can tackle that in 2022 based on jazz piano education, what's inside of jazz piano school, or even on your own, right? If you're planning on doing this on your own or with a teacher or something like that, you're going to have a much better understanding of the planning that goes into it, the exercises, the breakdown of what you need to learn systematically in a certain order to get you your want goal, okay? That's going to be coming next week. So, um, Ed, great to hear. Marla, uh, this is, I'm so glad this is helpful. Um, it puts what we are doing in a perspective and for lifetime members like me, this is a good context for keeping the progress and momentum going. Yeah, absolutely. This is why, this is why I love doing this for people. And, um, it's definitely helpful. I mean, to hear me speak about it, you know, obviously emails, it gets redundant and excessive and stuff like that. And obviously watching the videos inside of jazz piano school, you don't really, you know, this is always super, super good. And I, I'm going to be obviously doing, I'll continue to do live streams um, forever too. So you guys can always hop on here and do them. Sterling's going to do some live streams from New York city. He's now getting his uh, master's degree in at Manhattan school. Uh, Ed says, I was confused and wondering about deals for courses. So I'll check them out now. Awesome. Ed. So the deal, the holiday deals aren't going to be released until Monday of next week. And that's when you're going to be able to, uh, get discounts on all of our mini courses all of our playbook courses, again, individually or with bundles. If you want to buy, get a bundle or individually, that's completely up to you. All of our specialty courses and 
Um, I'm, I'm bringing back Lifetime Basic, which is going to give you access to um, the lab area, which contains all the playbooks and all the mini courses in the Success Path curriculum, and uh, Lifetime Elite, which is access to everything. So <laughs> you can get anything you want. It's a whole a la carte special. It's going to be running for 30 days. Um, or no, a little bit less, it's going to be running to January 6th. So it's kind of like a, a momentum building thing to get everyone through to the new year. And again, I'm going to be doing these live sessions for members, obviously to give them stre strategic planning. And obviously for non-members that want to buy courses and they're not really sure how to use them, I'm going to tell you how to use them. I'm going to go over the planning so that you can understand you have a better situational awareness of what you should be working on and focusing on so that you're not you know, wasting your money or if you just want to invest a little bit and you really want to take use of that, you can do that as well. Um, <clears throat> Rodrigo says, thanks, Professor. I've been studying for several months with you at the Jazz Piano School. It's been great. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. I appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, it's always a pleasure to to have people say that. You know, it's definitely... Um, it's, it, it takes a lot. It's, it's hard to, <laughs> to run a, a full business like this, you know, keep it going all the time. But, um, things like that always make me feel fulfilled in my soul because I, I'm literally doing it for, for you guys. And I just love piano and jazz piano. It's, it's been so nice to have it in my life and playing concerts and just playing music in general. It's such a gift, you know, uh, when you, when we get to do that, in, in a way that kind of brings light and hope to the world and it allows an output for us to express ourselves in a, in a deeper meaning and way. So, um, trick or knicker says, thanks, Brendan. I'm so happy you decided to join your platform. Awesome. So great. Ed, no problem. Thank you guys so much. So I'm not sure what day the next planning session will be on and, uh, it'll probably be sometime throughout the week, probably Tuesday or Thursday again. And I'll be breaking down the different emphasis categories like I was talking about and talking about the paths because it really spider webs out as I was showing you on the document, right? Because improv, a lot of students will say, I want to get better at improv, okay? From there, it's going to spider. Like, I should be doing this. You guys can't see this way, <laughs> this way. So it's like a family tree. If you picture a family tree, like you'd have improv, then you have solo piano or group improv, right? And if you choose, it's like the build your own adventure. If you choose group, then your improv is going to be different than solo piano. Because remember, if you're soloing, if you're improvising, excuse me, while playing solo piano, your left hand has to do a lot. That's a whole separate stuff. If you're playing in a group, you have a bass player and a drummer. That's, that's less stuff you have to do. So all these things are really relevant. They're very necessary and they're, they make a huge difference in the way you tackle and approach your jazz piano education. I was never taught any of this. I was never really told any of this. I was never, no one ever informed me about this way of learning education and approaching education to build efficiency and optimization into my learning path, right? This is all based on my failures and my wasted money and my wasted time over the years that I didn't, I want to help you all be as efficient as possible and make as much progress as possible. Okay. Um, Gene, I'll just answer this real quick, real quick. I'm making good progress on stage one with Mo's. However, I'm not confident in my proficiency in things like inversion in stage zero. I want to get to at least 150, stay on stage zero, do both or work on both stages. Uh, yeah, Gene. So this actually refers exactly like, um, exactly to what I was just talking about where this is, this is a perfect question because what is your want? Like Gene, ask yourself, what, what do you want? You know, like if you want to get your improvisation great, then that's, you can continue down the improvisation path, meaning learning your modes and stuff like that. So really kind of take hold of the, the Q1 want and need planning I'm giving you that I've, I've taught everyone today because it's going to be really helpful for you. If you want to get your comping better or your two hand voicings better, you're going to need those inversions. Like, uh, it, they're very necessary. Um, you don't need all your triad inversions, but they're going to be extremely helpful. If you're trying to play pop stuff or funk or triads are extremely helpful. Um, so it really is dependent upon you. 
So if you want more improv, you can definitely kind of keep going down the improv path. Or if you want more voicing solo piano work, that's going to be a different path you're going to need to work through, um, meaning your triads are going to be necessary. So I wouldn't recommend that you work on both. I'd recommend that you work on the things that are going to give you what you want in your jazz piano education. Remember, we, we can learn everything. It's very possible for us to learn everything, just not all at once. We can just can't do it all at once. We need to isolate what we want to work on, focus on it, improve it, and then work on to the next thing. All right. Um, Mark says, this is such a great program. Thanks, Brendan. My pleasure. Are there any events where we can submit recordings for feedback? Yeah, if you guys, <clears throat> any members on here, this is a members only thing. If you submit recordings to uh, the support team, if you go to Jazz Piano School, <clears throat> excuse me. If you go to jazzpianoschool.com forward slash support and submit any recordings, a bunch of people do this. I guess I should say this more, but um, we're always here to help. You know, I, I have educators on staff. A lot of you probably know Bijan in the community Facebook. And if you send us recordings, we're going to give you feedback back on your recording. So that's another great way. I don't do private lessons with anyone or one-on-ones personally, just because I don't have enough time. And there's so many members in Jazz Piano School, I would never be able to do it with everyone. I do have a um, a program that I'm still kind of toying with. I was supposed to start it last year. I did not because I was got super busy, but the um, Jazz Piano School uh, Accelerator program was going to be, is going to be, I'm not really sure, I'm still toying with it, uh, a, a three month long program where you get to work with me in a small group fashion with about 20 to 30 other people um, where you will have um, time with me to work on these things. You'll get time with the other educators inside of Jazz Piano School. And it's not just a group kind of chat thing here, it would be live video. So I'm actually watching people play like you would have your video up like on a Zoom call or something like that. And we'd be working back and forth uh, to really kind of decipher what you need to work on. And then you would get one on one lessons as well. So that's going to be down the road, probably maybe in the spring. And again, I'm still toying with dates, but that would be a 90 day intensive program in which you work with me and my Jazz Piano School staff of educators to really accelerate your progress and um any people who are new or not members, if you sign up for that, you get access to all um, the lifetime access to the course, to everything inside of Jazz Piano School. If you are a member, you're going to get um, a discount anyway. So that's just up to uh, some people. Um, but anyway, sorry. If you want, any members can submit feedback to the support page as a ticket and we will respond and give you feedback on your recording. So yes, Mark, go ahead and do that. Um, Marla, hopefully I answered that question. This is Ryan Tim. Carlos said, awesome. So guys, thanks so much. Um, I'm going to get back to a certain things. I got some other things to do for jazz piano school and, uh, all my other ambitions and projects that I work on, but I will see you next week. Just stay tuned to your inbox for the, for the, uh, the link for the live stream next week on the planning session. And I'll also be sending out the resource to everyone to prep them for, 2022 so you can actually write your goals in if you want you can print it out or it'll be fillable pdf online and you can start to prepare everything what you need so on and so forth all right i hope everyone has a great day and uh, thank you all so much for being here if you want to listen to a recording of this i'm going to post this as a podcast and it's also going to be on youtube as well so if you want to revisit anything i said you can go to jazz piano school the youtube channel or you can go to just listen on itunes or spotify our, our podcast my podcast is on spotify now jazz piano school podcast on spotify and you can re-listen to this episode all right i think that's it hope you guys have a great